Hi everybody, I'm doing this clip because of something that has happened in my life quite a few times over the past year and I have been both sides of the coin and also because this question has been put to me quite a few times um, and that is how do you deal with somebody you care about who is in need of your support but they're holding on to you too much and you're feeling drained and depleted. You feel a sense of obligation to be there for that person because you love them dearly and because they've been there for you in the past or whatever. Or maybe or maybe it's a, a family member or even a family member of your spouse or partner or just somebody where you feel it's kind of your duty to be helping them and looking after them, especially if it is a close friend. And it's a really tricky situation because you don't want to dismiss how they feel, you don't want to be rude, you don't want to upset them even more because they're already going through enough shit as it is. But they're also you also need to have your own boundaries. So it's just about getting the balance right. I'm gonna share a few things that you can do um, if it is a bit out of balance to try and sort of replenish your energy before and after you see that particular person. I mentioned before boundaries, and this is really important because you don't owe anybody anything. If they've done something nice for you in the past, that doesn't mean you owe them something nice. Obviously if you're friends with somebody for a really long time and you really care about them then of course you're going to want to be there for them but you're not going to be able to be there for them in a way that's beneficial to, to them if you're feeling depleted and you're doing it out of obligation and it's draining you so you need to set some boundaries. One of the pieces of advice I gave a friend which really helped was the fact that you don't have to, if they're calling you on your mobile phone, you don't have to answer it. And I know that sounds really nasty and really unloving, but it actually isn't. Because if you're feeling you're going to answer that phone out of pure obligation, you don't really, you, you know, you're going to sort of have this feeling of resentment about them speaking to you about their problems again or draining you or you allow or you feeling like you're drained you're going to have this slight resentment towards them and if you feel that before you've even ans answered the phone then don't answer the phone if you're not in a strong place to be able to deal with that you don't have to answer the phone you can detach from the situation slightly don't always reply to every text message straight away you don't have to go around there just because they've asked you to. You can be unavailable. Being unavailable when you haven't got any real plans, that's not a bad thing because your plan is you're being un unavailable because you're being self-loving. And actually, you being self-loving is helping them because if you're going to be answering the phone or going around there when you're feeling resentful and it's out of obligation, it's not coming from a space of true love and compassion and empathy um, and that they're going to pick up on that those energies and that's not going to help them but at the same time you have to be really diplomatic about it because it's really harsh when someone says to you I don't want to I can't talk I can't help you I can't talk about this anymore I can't help you like that hurts because obviously if you're confiding in someone and maybe you don't realise you've been speaking about the same thing again and again and again because that's the only thing in your mind, that's the only thing that's happening to you and and it's like a massive deal at the time and maybe you feel low or depressed and you feel like you really need somebody's help and then they turn around and say, I can't help you, I, I can't do this anymore, you're draining me, then that can be quite hurtful. So it's, I think it's more beneficial to start detaching yourself from the situation slightly and not always being available and I don't mean do this in a sly cunning way but I just mean actually if every time you're there when this person needs you 
they're not going to be able to help themselves anyway and they don't actually need you it, it's like where I've been in a situation and I've been draining somebody and when they've pulled away from that I've actually sorted my own problems out stopped moaning about it and got on with it a lot quicker than when I had someone there to fall back on so in a way it's doing them a favor kind of tough 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 love I guess in a way and I know that sounds really nasty but it just it what it actually means is when I'm not saying don't be there for them at all but it means that when you are able to be there for them it's because you want to be it's from a strong position from a space of love you're not going to resent them you're going to be able to give them better advice if you focused in on yourself for a bit and replenished yourself which I'll speak about in a minute you'll be able to give them better advice and better better care and love and by you not constantly being there for them it will in a way help them to resolve their issues quick quicker and that's i've been on both sides of the coin and i'm saying from both perspectives that's that's the case that really works if someone's really depressed because of their issues then you being around them in a, in a resentful mindset isn't going to help them. Your energy isn't going to lift them up if you're in a negative space. And it is okay to have boundaries and it's okay to say you're not available at that time when they need them, when they, need, when they feel they need you. It will mean that you'll be able to be there for them even more when you do when when you feel capable it's not selfish to do that it is actually the complete opposite you've got to have your boundaries you've got to feel right in your own heart and you if you're a caring loving person then actually you do need to put yourself first in order to put them first if you see what i mean that's my advice on that, is you don't have to answer the phone, you don't have to text back straight away, you don't have to always be available, you can detach from the situation. And if you do feel like you need to speak to that person and say to them, say something to them and say that, you know, you're not um, able to be there for them as much as they would like, then literally don't say to them, oh, you're draining me, I can't be that. I can't help you, you need to help yourself. Like, don't be abrupt about it. Be very, very empathetic and compassionate and just be understanding and say, I know you're going through so much, but I'm a person as well and I'm going through things too and I can't help you as much as you want me to and I will be there for you as much as I possibly can and I love you and I want to be there for you, but I can't be there for you all the time. It's okay to be honest. I think you'll find that it might, it might hurt them, but in the long run they'll understand and if they don't understand straight away just be patient because one day they will and if they don't appreciate that then they're not really the sort of person that you can class as a really good friend if if you're telling them there's only so much you can do The other thing, which is really um, useful, there's a few techniques. Ask for healing and um, maybe before you see them, ask for, for protection from your guides or from your higher self. Just put it out there. Ask for protection and ask for help and guidance and strength. And after you've seen them, you can do what I call cutting the cords. So if you visualise that person has got cords which are connected to you, you can just cut the cords and visualise yourself doing that and say to yourself, you know, I'm releasing this person and I'm cutting the cords. And that will 
give you a sense of relief. It doesn't matter that these things are not scientifically proven. If it makes you feel better, if asking for guidance, protection and cutting cords makes you feel better and stronger and more able, then do it. If it doesn't, then don't do it. Also, one other thing, if you've been around somebody who's quite, uh, where you feel quite depleted after being around them, it is really good to get outside and just recharge, just go outside, take a few deep breaths, go and stand by a tree, um, drink a glass of water and just take a few moments to ground yourself again. Um, imagine that your feet have have got, I don't know, I always imagine like cords of energy going down into the centre of the earth and really get rooted into the earth again and and draw up the energy from the earth and just imagine that energy coming up through your feet and just cleansing you and revitalizing you as for if you're on if you are the drainer <laughs> if you're the drainer in this uh situation which i have been and even this year i was and i <laughs> really couldn't believe that i'd done that because i have been saying about the fact that someone was draining me at the same time as I was draining someone else. So if you're the drainer and someone has said to you they can't help you or get over it or have not been very compassionate or empathetic and have not said it in a very nice way and it makes you feel like, oh, I thought I could rely on you, I thought I could, you would be there for me no matter what and then you feel disappointed and you feel let down by that person. One thing that I did is really practice compassion and understanding and empathy. Really try to um, forgive that person because and understand they're not saying it to hurt you, they're saying it because they're not coping with what you're putting on them. So if someone said that to you, and even if they've said it in a not very nice way, you need to try and forgive that and forgive yourself for needing them, for being needy, forgive that. And know that you are capable of resolving your issues and there's other people in your life that you can turn to. You don't have to rely solely on just one person. Even if you feel like that person you connect with on the highest level or on a deeper level compared to other people, that doesn't mean other people aren't gonna be able to help you. So even if like your best friend or some or you're someone who's you're really close to who you thought is the only person that really understands you has turned around and said to you, "Oh, I can't be there for you." And you feel really let down by that. Just try and be forgiving and have empathy and compassion and understanding that they're not doing that to hurt you. They're doing it because they can't deal with what you're putting on them. And maybe if you take a step back and seek for help elsewhere you don't have to deal with everything on your own you can find it elsewhere like there'll be other people in your life that will surprise you and help you when you need it most and also you can look online go on youtube read books you can help yourself as well and all the power is is within you the other thing i was going to say is that keep an understanding of the fact that Everyone that you're interacting with, and this is whether you are the drainer or the drainee, everyone you are interacting with is a reflection of some aspect of yourself and you can learn something amazing from that situation. And I like to switch things around. When I thought that someone was not having compassion and understanding for me, I switched it around and asked myself, am I being compassionate and understanding? And I realised I really wasn't. If someone is behaving a certain way towards you, switch it around and ask yourself, how am I doing that? Am I, am I doing that? And, you know, just try and switch the situation up a bit because it will give you a, a bigger, a greater perspective on it, a, be, a bigger perspective, and you'll actually gain a lot of knowledge from doing that and you'll realise, shit, this is a reflection of something within me that I need to deal with. It's all from within you. There is a negative, situa negative situation happening and if, some, if it feels like someone is draining you, ask yourself, how have I manifested this? Why is this important? And you'll probably get 
answers over the next few days in various ways, whether that's information, situations, feelings, visions, dreams, that it will come to you and you'll realise the lessons of what it is that you're learning and it will really benefit you in the future. It certainly benefited me to be on, be the drainer and have someone say to me, no, they can't help me. Um, because I respected that in that person, even though at the time I felt hurt, I respected her boundaries and I was almost a bit jealous that I hadn't done that before to people, to the person that had been draining me. I was draining someone at the same time as someone was draining me and when the person I was draining said to me, I can't help you, I really respected that person and I was slightly jealous that I hadn't even, I hadn't had the courage to say that to the person who was draining me. So I took on board the positives from that and took on board the, the, the way that that hurt me, I took that on board and then I took that information and used it in the situation I was in with someone where I felt like I was being drained, I felt drained around them and I used that experience to help me positively with that relationship. So it just goes to show you can learn things from each side of the coin and if you're one side of the coin, don't be fooled into thinking that another time in your life you're not going to be the other side. You're not going to be the other side of the coin because it can happen either way, and you might judge someone um, for something that they're doing that you feel isn't good, but actually you may have done that without realizing it, or you might be doing it, or you might do it in the future and expect someone to be there for you. So just bear that in mind. Keep your boundaries, remain compassionate, empathetic and loving. Um, don't do things out of obligation, do it from a space of positivity and replenish yourself, protect yourself, ask for guidance and bear in mind that everything is reflecting something at you. So I hope that helps, I don't know if that's what, any, what you wanted to hear but that's how it's been for me and I might even be able to add to this in the future if more things occur. So I hope this helps and um, if you want to leave any comments please do so. If you want to connect with me please subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my website which is www.peachyhealth.co.uk or add me as a friend on Facebook, it's Jackie Lane. I'll put the links below. I'd love to connect with you, and if you've experienced anything or want to give any advice of your own or any comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.